Hey guys, welcome back to another Theory of Everyday Life. This time we're going to be talking about social exchange theory. So social exchange theory is going to take us in a little bit of a different direction than what we've been dealing with up to now. Uh, even when we were dealing with dramaturgy, everything that we've talked about up to now has looked at people from a kind of symbolic interactionist perspective in the sense that people make meaning and it might be that the meaning that we make is more interested in or more oriented toward preventing ourselves from embarrassment, but we had kind of a consistent perspective on uh, what human beings were. Um, social exchange theory I, is a little bit off-putting to a lot of people, me included, at least at first, because instead of thinking about us as meaning-making, which is sort of complementary, I mean, it makes it sound like we are intellectuals who are processing information. Social exchange theory uh, doesn't deny that, uh, but it doesn't focus on it. It says, yeah, maybe that's true. We're not really concerned with that. What we're concerned with is the way in which people go about their lives. Uh, it's probably not co a coincidence that it's based on a particular type of psychology called behaviorism, which was really developed mostly by B.F. Skinner, who kind of famously said, we're never going to know what goes on in a human brain. But what we can know is if I reward somebody for something, the behavior that I'll see at the end of is more is is in line with what that reward was. So you can by rewarding and punishing people, you can get them to act in ways that are you know, either more socially appropriate or B.F. Skinner um, really believed in trying to make people's lives better. So figuring out ways of rewarding and punishing that would help people to get in shape or quit smoking or something like that. The important thing is we usually think of psychology as the psychology of the individual. And uh, Skinner viewed psychology, he didn't say that was not true. He just said we can't know anything really about that. What we can know is about cause and effects, about behaviors, and hence behaviorism. Um, George Homans is also going to be, he's going to be rooting everything he does sociologically in behaviorism. So social exchange theory is going to take that limited perspective on human nature. It's not saying humans are only this. We are just like gratification seeking machines. He's not saying that. He's saying that that is the part of humans that I want to pay attention to when I'm building my sociology. And he says, if I look at humans, if I just look at that component of humans, what I can see, I can kind of get rid of a lot of the details and get the essence of what's going on with people. And the essence is we go into relationships or interactions and what we are doing is exchanging information. Some of the exchanges might be verbal information. So, how are you doing? I am fine. Some of it might be smiles or hugs or, you know, the opposite of those things as well. Uh, but all of it, he, he says, we can think about as exchanges of things. And that is going to be the foundation that we're going to build ourselves, uh, build our social exchange theory on. So. Do what you can to get past, if you have my sort of initial aversive reaction, this isn't really what humans are like, put it on hold and see if, because I'm going to make an argument at the end, that there's benefit to looking at, uh, to looking at life in this way. Okay, so that's a long introduction, guess four minutes. Okay, we're going to get into it. Social exchange theory. Uh, the perspective says that individuals seek to maximize their own private gratifications. Um, private gratifications are the things that they find gratifying. You want to seek pleasure and avoid pain, is basically that. There is a little bit of symbolic interactionism in that, it, the, at that initial stage. It's things that are meaningful to me um, are the things that I will seek, but that's we're going to leave symbolic interactionism there. Um, so second point of the foundation of the perspective is that rewards, those private gratifications, can be found in social interactions. Okay, so we are looking to, to gratify, to maximize our gratification. We do that by going into interactions with other people. So what we see is a bunch of people walking around and interacting with each other. And in those interactions, they are trying to maximize 
the gratification that they get. Importantly, it's not about minimizing it to somebody else. It's not a zero-sum game, and that's a really important idea. Um, in fact, this is a difference that uh, social exchange theory has over the things that have come before. Even Goffman. Goffman said the audience is part of the team. Homans and the social exchange theorists are saying what's happening is you have a whole bunch of people who are going into these relationships, these interactions, and they are, um, they are all trying to gratify themselves in that. They're all seeking self-gratification. And so there's an equality of people. It's not actor and audience or, you know, person who is interpreting meaning and meaning people who are giving off meanings. It's, it's, we're equals and we're both trying to do the same thing, which is maximize our own, uh, maximize our own gratification. I like that. I like that equality aspect to it. But what he says, and this is kind of a cool thing too, he says that this is going to create a huge amount of complexity because if I am interacting with you on the basis of trying to maximize my gratification and you are acting with me on that same basis, we are constantly, we are constantly influencing each other. So I say something that puts you into a good mood and then you are more likely to give me um give me the, the smile that I'm looking for or the laugh that I'm looking for and that puts me in a good mood. And then, and so the person that you are interacting with on the other side of that is constantly changing based on the interaction. That is also a pretty cool thing. Okay, so, but it adds a huge amount of complexity and that's why Homans at our level of social exchange theory is gonna be concerned with dyads, two person exchanges, okay. I think that's the foundation stuff. We're maximizing, grat maximizing gratification. The gratifications are found in interaction. A whole bunch of us doing that, we're all equals. I think that's good for the foundation. So let's move into uh, the sort of the middle part of this, which is, okay, so what are the ways in which this is like an economic exchange and what are the ways in which it's different? First of all, the way it's like it. Um, People are motivated by self-interest. So I am going into these situations and Homans is not saying that people are only self-interested. He's saying that's the important part that we want to pay attention to if we're going to build a theory of society. We walk around with self-interest. He doesn't think this is a negative thing. People aren't selfish. Remember, we go all the way back to Adam Smith with self-interest. Uh, self-interest enables the invisible hand to create wealth for the nation. Um, and Homans is kind of thinking the same thing. He said, if we are, if I am out pursuing my benefits and I know that rewarding you is going to get me the benefits that I want, that's going to be good for everybody. So self-interest can advance the interest of everybody, like an, uh, an economic system. The second way it's like an economic system is he looks at, at, uh, at, relationships in terms of rewards and costs. So it's not just, am I getting that smile or that laugh from you? It's what does it cost me to do it? Um, and he says that I will continue a relationship if it is rewarding and not super, super costly, or at least if the cost seems commensurate with the reward I'm getting. So if it takes me, if I have to go through a whole bunch of compliments to you and a ton of jokes and I'm buying you a whole bunch of stuff and that's what the reward I get is a smile for that. I may not, that social relationship probably doesn't con continue, but I'm definitely willing to pay some cost for a reward. It's just, they have to kind of be in balance with each other. All right, that's the way it's like an economic exchange. Um, but again, remember that the what what we're exchanging here is is uh, elements of a relationship. So smiles, hugs, uh, compliments, support, emotional support, that type of stuff. Okay, ways in which it's different, and I will scoot myself back so you can see this, ways that it's different. Um, the relationships that exist in uh, a social relationship are different than an economic relationship. First of all, they are ongoing. Um, it's not about we aren't deciding whether we're going to buy, uh, 
from we're going to eat at the same restaurant. Like an e- on the economic side, I might I have a relationship with a restaurant in that I go there and then I may continue to go or I may not continue to go. Social relationships are way, way more entangled than that. So the relationship is much more likely to be ongoing and to have costs associated with it not being ongoing. Um, the relationship you have with a, a boyfriend or girlfriend as compared to the relationship you have with a restaurant. That's what we're talking about with that relationship thing. Um, we're likely to continue in those relationships if they are rewarding and discontinue them if they are really costly. Um, second way that it's different. In an economic relationship, I don't get punished. Um, there are costs, like if I if I buy a meal from a restaurant, I'm spending money and therefore I'm giving up the money. That's a cost. I am also giving up the opportunity to eat at some other restaurant. That's what's called an opportunity cost. Um, but I'm not going to get, like, I'm not going to eat there and then they're going to yell at me and be mad at me if I act the wrong way. Uh, at least that's not super likely. Don't, like, push the metaphor too far. But over here, absolutely. If, if, um, if I am disrespectful to my wife, for example, it's not just that I have given up whatever, you know, that energy or time. It's that I could actually get punished, um, you know, by her, you know, ultimately deciding to divorce me. But, you know, I, she could just be angry at me and not want to talk to me. And that's a cost that exists within that relationship. So another way in which relationships are, uh, social relationships are different than economic, that idea of punishment. And the third and probably the most important way is that there is multifaceted interdependence in a social relationship. So my relationship with a restaurant is I want food, you want money. It's one dimensional. But my relationship with my wife involves love and it involves support and it involves uh, just enjoying each other's company. And there's all kinds of different elements to that. Uh, and that's what it means by we, our relationship is multifaceted. It's not just that one, I give you this and you give me that. There are all kinds of elements to our relationship. Um, and then, and that's what brings our interdependence together. Um, or that's what creates our interdependence. That, I'm not saying that super well. Our interdependence is multifaceted. Okay. So let me see, that is, I think, that's it for that. Um, let me get to the conclusion of this. So we're gonna pull back out of the weeds of our uh, of social exchange theory. Um, I think of social exchange theory as thinking about the world in general is in color. And social exchange theory is saying, let's turn off the color and just watch it in black and white. We're going to lose some detail in that but it also simplifies things and makes it easy to see certain elements of, of reality. And that's, I think, the value of social exchange theory. Um, relationships can be thought of as exchanges of rewards. Uh, again, that's not all the richness and detail of the relationship, but it can be thought of that. Rewards like smiles and hugs and empathy and uh, support and help, all of those things. We can think of all of those as potential rewards that you can get that you, you know, have to pay for um, and generally paying through rewards to the other person. Um, finally, satisfaction occurs in a social relationship when there is, and this is a, a term I believe from Homan's, distributive justice. I should have written that up there. I believe it's in the text though. Distributive justice. And distributive justice, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off script for a moment and write that. So this is not associated with that. Distributive justice. And distributive justice means that there is an equivalence in the input and the outcome ratios. What that means is um, the rewards I receive 
seem commensurate or proportional to what I give. And it's the exact same thing on the other side of that relationship. Both myself and my wife feel like the rewards we give, or I'm sorry, the rewards that we get from the relationship are proportional to the amount we put into the relationship. If both of those things, if both people feel that way, that's what he calls, and again, not a super relationship -y term, distributive justice. The rewards are being distributed in a just way to both people. Okay, we will have more to say on exchange theory. There's going to be a guy named Richard Emerson who's gonna to try to blow this up into this as the foundation, these dyadic relationships as the foundation to an entire macro sociology, but that's for next week. Um, next time, we're gonna look at another theory that simplifies human nature. Uh, it's called rational choice theory. So I will see you in that video.